Grogu. Goku. Super Saiyan Jedi! Hey there, Nomads of Lore. I'm Jonathan. And I'm Sean. And we are Mead and Mischief, your home away from no home. And today we are discussing The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 5. Cinco. Cinco de Mayo. Wait, no. Okay. <laughs> Today we're going to discuss uh, our thoughts and reaction to mm -hmm. episode five of season two, if I can get it out. And uh, and we're going to talk about a few things that we would like to talk about that that are that really stood out to us. Highlights, Easter eggs. Um, there's so much in this episode; it is packed, almost too much, jam packed full. Mm -hmm. We're not even going to do a summary because I think we're just going to skim right over that. Y'all just watched it; we just watched it. We know what goes on, uh, but there's so much to talk about. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of skim over some things. We're gonna do real high level, just look at the very top of mm -hmm. some things. We've got a few more videos we would like to do ab about a lot of these mm. individual things. And so those will be coming. Look for those. I don't we'll know do when, some but sometime dive. this week, we'll next week, soon sometime soon. soon. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then we'll do uh, some predictions of what's going to happen in the next episodes very soon. So Absolutely. let's get started. So the first thing everybody right wanted to talk about in this episode, including us, the first thing that going into this episode that everybody was excited about was Ahsoka Tano herself. And as I hollered in our live reaction, which is terrible, by the way, you can go watch it if you want, but it's slow. You have to scrub through it and find yeah. where it's interesting and not us just staring at the screen. Yep. But um, as I hollered then, they didn't waste any time. Ahsoka shows up right off the bat, and she was awesome. I think she both was. of us really, really loved the portrayal. Uh, there she were was. a few things that weren't quite cartoon accurate. Her yeah. uh, Leku weren't uh, as long as they were in Rebels, and her mantra didn't work quite as tall. As tall. Mm -hmm. um, it's, that's, prob because, that's probably because that was a practical effect, and it, with her acrobatic fighting style they would, they would have smacked her in the face and, and weird and, and, yeah, yeah. It would have, so that's probably why they did that which is a shame because it would have looked better yeah but. It, it took a little bit the only thing that i have to say about her it, negative is that it took a little and it wasn't even negative just took a little bit to get used to looking at her in live action sure um because she was done so well and and you're just used to seeing her in rebels and and Clone, and Clone Wars, absolutely. And so it took a little bit, and then and then we did talk a little bit about her. Her she they they did nail pretty well her fighting style. I went back and watched mm -hmm. some of it, and kind of did some comparisons between Rebels and and the only thing that they didn't nail is how fast she was. Oh yeah, and and a lot of that I think like we talked about if you remember in episode two, not of uh, the movie episode two. Um, not not of Mandalorian, the, but the, the Attack of the Clones. Yes, Attack of the Clones. There yeah. you go. Couldn't remember what it's called. I think it was episode two. Mm -hmm. It may have been three, but anyway, no, where Yoda? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Yoda's doing his crazy acrobatic jumping around, going all crazy, and everybody was like, "What yeah. in the heck is going on?" Yeah. Because I'm it sorry, looked, Michael, but it looked terrible. It, it You're did. wrong. It did. <laughs> and and so I think if they had tried to continue that that look for Ahsoka into live action, it would have looked a lot like that, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So I think that's kind of why they slowed her down. Also, the whole samurai thing was really, really heavy in this episode. Yes. And I think that slow st fighting style that Showiness. goes all the way back to episode four, five, and six, the the, the beginning um, of, you know, Darth Vader and... Uh, his design. Well, the, his design, but also his very first fight with... Uh, Obi Wan. Uh, Obi Wan. Mm -hmm. It was very slow, yeah. very yes. intentional, and and so I think that anyway, we love. I, I loved her. Absolutely. So it, it it was great. Yeah. Um, her yeah. even even her. You know, it's a little little um, sad uh, to not. I should have looked it up. I meant to write it down on the board. I think it's is it Ashley Eckstein? Eckstein. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Something like that. But mm -hmm. I'll put it in the description if I'm like so far off, um, <laughs> or you can comment because um, I do want to homage her homage. the the verse the i can't you know i'm trying to trying real hard to talk here folks <laughs> uh but uh the lady who voiced ahsoka in the cartoon uh, clone wars rebels and she also narrates the book ahsoka um and so 
it's it was it was different. Her voice, her voice is, is, is different. Synonymous to the character. Yes, it's and just so, so hearing, tied. Hearing Rosario, Rosario, Dawson. Rosario Dawson do it. It. I think it really worked. Uh, personally, sure. uh, we we've discussed that back and yeah. forth. I mean, it's it's kind of sad to not have. Um, the original voice, but it, been, it would have been really weird if Rosario Dawson was lip syncing. Yeah, too. that that would have been tough to do. Yeah, and uh, I, I think yeah, I, I think it worked. That was yeah. that was all right. So Ahsoka was cool. The one uh, Easter egg, egg we're from Texas. Uh, the one Easter egg that we wanted to mention is one that a lot of people have, have talked about. Actually, I didn't even notice it when I watched it the first time. Um, is at one point when Ahsoka is walking through this desolate forest, we see up in the, in this tree an owl, which is almost certainly not guaranteed, but almost certainly a uh, either is Morai, which will mm -hmm. say a little bit what what that means, uh, or is tied to, or is even just kind of an homage to fan service to, to that idea. To that mm -hmm. idea. So Morai is a character that shows up in some really cool, one of my favorite character arcs, one of my favorite, not character arcs, one of my favorite Ever, story episodes. story arcs mm -hmm. in Clone Wars where we get this really interesting force users that are not Jedi or Sith. Um, They're the father, the son, and the daughter. Yes. And, and the daughter is Morai. Yeah, who's kind of the embodiment of the light side, whereas the sun is the embodiment kind of the, of of the, dark, the dark side. side. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and it's really cool. We won't go into detail. Uh, there are other people that, that do that. Who knows? We If there's enough interest, let us know in the comments. We'd be happy to do a video on that because oh, yeah. it, it was a great, was great a arc. So, yeah, that's that's the first thing we wanted to talk about. Let's see. What was the next? So the city, the, the city that we... That, um, she walks or she comes up to the gate obviously and then and then mando actually walks into um there's a there's a lot of cool stuff there it's uh it's very desolate it's very um downtrodden i don't know what you know they're they're very horrific low, <laughs> yeah very uh low income mm -hmm. kind of like terrible living conditions um people hanging in these weird basket jail things you mm -hmm. can see in the distance and um, it, it's super sad, but it kind of ties back to the same feel you have from Navarro from episode one, uh, one or two of the first season. I don't remember when oh, he gets on to Navarro. Yeah. Um, where they, they have both that, that feel of this, like the empire has just had this horrible impact on this place and, you know, we're maybe kind of trying to get out of that, but obviously this new place is being run by somebody who was from the empire. And so we're we haven't even been able to get out of this yet. So um, there's a cool tie there. Mm -hmm. And there's the dissonance between uh, that that horrible living condition and then he walks into the magistrate's living quarters. Extravagance. And this extravagant, beautiful, almost botanic koi pond, yeah. koi pond thing mm -hmm. where all these this all this life is happening. And you look at the entire rest of the planet and it's completely devoid of life. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. In this city, I don't remember what the name of the city is, mm -hmm. capital of, of uh, Corvus, the planet. Oh, it's, it starts with a C. It does like also start with a C. We did the same it. thing. Should have looked it up. <laughs> oh, well, we don't really care. They didn't, I, as far as I know, they didn't even mention it in this episode. Mm -hmm. um, but he gets in there because of his uh, bounty hunter guild connection. And he ends up meeting this magistrate in the beautiful Koi Pond area. And she tasks him with going and killing the Jedi, who we already know is Ahsoka, um, even though she is no Jedi. Um, it's true. He's, Mando is tasked with going to kill her. And so he says, okay, sure, because what else is he going to say? So he goes to meet up with Ahsoka, and they have this standoff, which is kind of cool. He's like, no, dude, Bo-Katan sent me. And then... All this stuff happens, and the the cool thing that we wanted to mention uh, that we may go into more detail in another video, actually. But the one one thing that we really wanted to mention is it really highlights the father son connection between Mando and who we now know is named Grogu, which the name is starting to grow on me a little. I still think it's Gro a little Grogu. <laughs> it's a little uh, silly uh, uh, and strange. No pun intended. Yeah. Uh. I don't know. Yeah. I don't love it, but I don't either. Uh, it's I. I don't hate it as much as I. <laughs> yeah. Hadouken. Oh, wait, no. Speaking of Hadouken and Street Fighter.
Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We're crossing several layers of references here. Name them all in the comments. If you can get them all, we'll give you a prize of <laughs> tip our hat to you. <laughs> um, anyway, so that that is very important and very very central to the core of Star Wars. Again, we we may uh, this may be one of the videos that we we do as a separate thing, but that was really cool and really important. We also learn a little bit of Grogu's backstory. You want to mention a little bit about that? Yeah. So we we talk about our Ahsoka brings up that she's able to kind of communicate, which yeah. that's another key telepathetically. Thing. We we kind of would like to know. I mean, it's a bit. I think it's going to be a big thing. It's a well, maybe, maybe not, but they definitely communicated, and they're Ooh. able to communicate kind of by yes, they by are by just you know using the force or whatever. But she talks about the fact that he was originally in um, Coruscant, in the Jedi yes. Temple, and and that he was spirited away during Order sixty six by someone saved. He would also by someone. just to interject. He would also, if you do the math a little bit, he would also probably be about the same age as Anakin, or in very mm. similar, very similar time frame. So, he, mm -hmm. so anyway, good to you. Mm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, he was he was spirited away by someone, and we, of course, don't know who that is. There's several different people that mm -hmm. a lot of people are talking about right now on yeah. on YouTube that it could be. Um, it, I, I don't know that it necessarily matters at this point to the story. It would be cool to learn at some point, maybe, mm -hmm. but we'll see. Sure. Interesting. So. So the other little Easter egg, there's another small one that we wanted to throw in there that is interesting, uh, is the best. I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. The best Star Wars game ever made is Knights of the Old Republic, okay. uh, yeah. Bioware title, and it's for some reason you were gonna start talking about the Fallen terrible, Order. Yeah, no, the that's definitely one. not the best. Game. I thought you were it's, being I don't funny know that it's and the I was worst. Like... No, the best game is Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, what we still, still need to do a Fallen Order review? Sorry, we should to keep. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I said this one was gonna be quick. <laughs> uh, anyway, forty five minutes later. <laughs> yeah, Hi nice. guys. <laughs> yes. So in Knights of the Old Republic, you like our cool mics. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Um, in Knights of the Old Republic, we are introduced to a character who is a droid. It's an assassin droid, and it's it's HK forty seven. Uh, and he's I loved his character in Knights of the Old Republic. He's snarky. He's kind of rude. He's kind of mean. You're a little bit scared because he's a, he was originally a bad guy before we met him, and he was kind of hired to to kill folks and it's a little bit scary and whatever. And it's just a real fun character. Well, the droids that uh, Mando and Ahsoka fight in the city, the sea named city, um, are HK-87s. So kind of like that IG-88, IG-11. IG yeah, connotation, connection, whatever. It's the same kind of idea. I, I don't think anything will come of it, but it's, it's a cool throwback to mm -hmm. an awesome mm -hmm. idea. And after that, whenever we're we're starting into the big fight scene, we've got all we've got all this action going on between Ahsoka and the magistrate and Mando the kind of standing there. Spear, yes, the spear. The, mm -hmm. the another cool thing that we didn't talk about: Beskar being able to stop a lightsaber and seeing that for the first time. I don't time. remember if that's awesome. been in I don't like canon it has or been. extended universe before, I don't but think it's cool. It has. Yeah, it makes so, sense. Yeah, so we. Uh, so we've got them fighting, and we've got Mando kind of in a standoff, and Ahsoka turns to her and says, where is your master <gasps> Thrawn? And mm -hmm. the biggest name drop that, you know, you think, okay, Ahsoka's been, Ahsoka's a huge surprise. We knew she was coming. We didn't yeah. know when. Comes at the very beginning well, of we the episode. Well, we were pretty dang sure she was going to be in this episode. Yeah, well, yeah, but we didn't know when in the episode, and right. she comes at the very beginning, so it's a huge surprise. Right. And then... And then we've got all this going on, and they've already opened up so much by telling mm. us Grogu and, you know, His Order 66 and, and all this yeah, connection. All this and then, okay, let's add Admiral Thrawn into the mix. Yeah, exactly. And all of a sudden you see, okay, she is not going to stay around. We could see this a mile. Yes. I mean, we talked we, about yes. it beforehand. We, called we could that. see mm. that she is not going to stay around. She's not going to help Grogu in any way because she's got her well, other... significantly. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, well, many reasons, and we've talked about them in the past, but I can go back over them, but one of them being she's got her own thing she's doing right now. Um, right. Her other reasons being that she... Anakin. A yeah, Anakin. Yeah. And her <laughs> fear of that happening again mm -hmm. and her being tied to it. And she's like, I've already done so much destruction because yeah. of failing Anakin. You know, that's... She feel... I think her and Obi-Wan both feel this a lot right now. Yeah. And... 
Um, and so, and then the other thing is, she was completely cast out by the Jedi Order that trained mm-hmm. her. And so, including Yoda. she since <laughs> then, yeah, since then has been very um, kind of not standoffish, but just I, I will do, I will, I will try to help when I can, mm-hmm. but I'm kind of on my own. Yeah. And that's just how she's been. And so she's I, not a joiner, Blue. <laughs> she's not a joiner. And that's right. And it, and it, I think it all ties back to that singular part where they they threw her out but well anyway anakin's fall too yeah 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 yes yes yeah it started there and anakin's fall made it pretty much permanent Mm, yeah exactly yeah so absolutely so the very last thing that we wanted to really mention is her putting mando and grogu on their new path Mm. and she (laughs) sends them to Tython, the the temple on Tython and the Seeing Stone there, and says go there. And then basically the way she describes it is is you're gonna stick Grogu on this thing, and then he's gonna be a beacon, and then somebody's gonna show up, and then he gets to choose his path. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and so the big question there, and we're we are. We may do another video. We may not, depending on when we get some of this stuff out. We, we may know. We may know mm-hmm. the answers by then. But is who is going to show up and who's going to be there? You know, and a lot of people are talking about light side people that we know are still alive or or in the, a few cases we are pretty sure are still alive. Um, and um, so that's possible. We, we could see Luke show up, which could be cool. Um, Jonathan's mentioned several times when like today that, that that might be a little scary because he might kind of take over the show, which would be a negative yeah. since it's the Mandalorian. Um, so that's, but anyway, we're not going to go too deep in those. Another big option, which is, is kind of a fan favorite as far, I think as far as a um, possibility is Ezra, Ezra Bridger from mm-hmm. Rebels. Um, which could be cool. We have our own several theories and ideas and wishful thinkings about that. We'll go into those details. <laughs> um, we'll go well. We may go into those details in in more detail in another video. Some of them, even if we know who it is, we still yeah. may discuss some of those things. Another less popular, in our opinion, yeah. thing. Yeah. We don't like. We it. don't like this at all. But <laughs> there there's a lot of people that, that do like it, <laughs> yep. uh, and it's Cal yep. from Fallen Order. Yep. Um, as a character, the protagonist, he's a the little main a little weak. As a as an actor, I like I like him. Yeah, but, he's a good uh, actor. Mm-hmm. But as a character and the writing in Fallen Order, I don't like. And so it, it would be I it would definitely be a fan service thing if they did it. And and it could turn into something better, hopefully, with their yes, writing. It and could their, redeem that character. Yeah, it which could, could be cool. It could. Um redeem in our eyes. Some yeah. people will really like him yeah. already, but yeah. So then another option would be Dark Side. Yeah. The, which uh, nobody's side really user. talking about. No. I don't know why exactly. I mean he's gonna force me to it, it the was universe. almost it was almost <laughs> like a it was almost like an unspoken thing too. I felt like in that moment it was like so you're gonna beacon out, and then somebody and could show up, or wink, multiple wink, somebody's wink, could wink. show up. And it was up. like it's, it's almost like he's gonna have a choice of dark side, light side, that's whatever else. Terrifying, yeah, yeah it because is. Because there's so now. Now we tried really hard to think, okay, who's alive at this point? Yeah, and who's actually active? That we well actually know we know, named and, characters, and there isn't mm-hmm. really any dark side users. If you really not, a, not, not, not I mean, really. we've obviously got Thrawn and Grand Moff. Gideon, whatever Moff Gideon, yeah, uh, who are bad, who guys. are bad guys, but actual Which dark I think Moff side. Gideon could be a force user. I don't think that's going to happen, but I could see that. But anyway. yeah, yeah, um, and and maybe that is where they go with it. That could, I never even thought about that, but um, but we, but as far as actual users, we we only have the the spirit of Palpatine. our late Palpatine. <laughs> yeah. Good old uh, shave. That is not put back together, obviously, because I think that's where we're headed with this whole baby Yoda thing. Uh, I'm sorry, Grogu thing. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I think that's where we're headed. So we, he's not back. I mean, he might be in spirit form or some other there kind of whatever. could be a flavor of Snoke already. Yeah, but I, again, is, still think we're not there because probably. of baby Yoda. Um, because yep. I think the time frame's not there. Yep. Uh, it, but it could be. Um, mm-hmm. And then... And then really the only other thing that we came up with was Inquisitors, yep. possibly still being around, maybe some of Darth Vader's Inquisitors yeah, um, still being active, which would be interesting. But maybe there's somebody that um, Tron brings back. 
Could There's be. that possibility. Like well, we, we Ezra mentioned... and Ezra have been gone. Yeah, together. Or presumably. maybe another. Yeah, we. So <laughs> one character we did like uh, in Fallen Order was a character named Taron Malakos, right? Mm-hmm. And he. He's the crazy would, Jedi guy that went. Yes, he was. Yeah, he, the dark side. Yeah, became a dark Jedi. And he. Went to Dathomir, the home of the Night Sisters, mm-hmm. which would be really cool. I've mentioned before. I don't remember if I've mentioned on film or not, but definitely when he and I have been talking, I would love to see Night Sisters live action. It'd be mm-hmm. terrifying. Mm-hmm. But he he is a super cool character, um, and yep. that could be really neat. I don't think that's gonna happen, but I think it's a stretch. Somebody else who's much less popular, uh, or much less popular from this side of the fence, is Ezra. Oh yeah, turning we, dark. Yes, and wait, at, which I love that idea. Yeah, I and you know, I'm sure a lot of fans would hate that idea of of Ezra becoming going to the dark side. Um, but that, I think that could be really cool, and it be it could be a really really inter- and it could be interesting too if he ends up joining up with Thrawn somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're, we're gonna do we're gonna do a re- we're definitely gonna do Real, a deep dive. Really in Thrawn, quick breakdown but. and spoiler alert: if you haven't read the original Thrawn trilogy, if you ever plan to, turn away. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Air in the Empire, in, Dark Force, that, the, yeah, that those original three. trilogy, yes. yeah. So in those, he Thrawn actually, and it's the only time I know of in any. Uh, stories, even they're obviously not canon, but legend mm-hmm. that a non force user controls a force user. Mm-hmm. Um, because obviously, well, if you have the force, force user too, and it, yeah, a very, a very powerful dark side user, yeah. And Thrawn is able to control him because there are these, um, like sloth like lizard, lizard mm-hmm. creatures, they're, whatever they're uh, called, Salamiri. Yeah, mm-hmm. and which take away the force around mm-hmm. them, so mm-hmm. they like kind of, I don't know, like a black hole yeah. for for force around them, and so the the thought that I had when he started talking about Ezra being possibly being dark, it would be interesting if he came back and was actually con- kind of controlling Ezra because the whole time, and I hadn't thought about this, but Sean was talking about how when Ezra and oh, this is big spoiler for Rebels. When Ezra was being brought off, brought along and being shown, you know, the Jedi way, he runs into Darth Maul, Darth Maul. Mm-hmm. and Darth Maul really starts to pull him very quickly. It's crazy in in half an episode away mm-hmm. because because he's able to manipulate it so well. Just so yeah. Darth Maul is awesome bad guy, guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wish we could see another live action Darth yep. Maul that wasn't so just just. Just there dancing and around, there and yeah. Anyway, uh, but anyway, so he he starts to be pulled so quickly that side. So it would be interesting. It definitely could could happen that he went away with Thrawn. He hates Thrawn. All these things. He's killed a lot of his friends. But then somehow Thrawn just turns everything around and and manipulates him into coming back and helping him build a new empire that is not yeah. the empire that is or something. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I mean, there's any number of ways that Thrawn... Well, we, get, we're, we are definitely going to do a deep dive into yeah. Thrawn. Yeah. Um, he's one of our favorite characters, and I have read all the things yeah. with Thrawn, and he's, he's read a lot of stuff. So we're definitely going to do a deep dive on that at some point, because there's a lot there, and that would be super, super cool. Yeah. Um, we are going to do... We're going to talk more about this episode. We are. A lot more. But that's about it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Leave us a comment below what you thought about this episode, what your most exciting things, predictions, all these other cool things are. And like it, comment it, and subscribe Subscribe. it. And ring the bell. Ring the bell. Don't forget. Don't forget. Yeah. Bye, guys. See you later.